Wait, what's that equation, then? Nothing. Nothing? No. Oh, I saw, I saw water at the end. Oh, water's always produced. Oh, oh okay. I was, uh, yeah, I was doing acid things. Oh, all right. Well, was, was there a formula? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so I remember that now. So that's all right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what it was for. Right? Oh, okay. That's, that's good planning. Well done, mate. So, there's two types of formula. There's empirical and molecular formula. So what are these two things? Well, the empirical formula is the easiest way to write something. I have to go for that one first. You may be aware that salt, the sort of salt you put on your chips, is sodium chloride. And that chips. CL. Yeah. yeah. Now, you can see salt, but you can't see atoms. That implies that there's lots of sodiums and lots of chlorines. But we don't write Na6 billion chlorine 6 billion. We don't. We write it in its simplest form. We write it in its whole number ratio. That's what we think about things. It's, it's, it's quite easy to see when we talk about something like water, which is H2O. The same thing appears here, except when you go all the way down to whole number ratios, it's just two per hydrogens per one oxygen and water. Yes. So that should be millions of these molecules. But every molecule will have two of them to one of them. Every, sodium, uh, every salt will have one sodium to one chlorine. Yeah. And that's empirical. It's its simplest whole number ratio rather than expressing it with ridiculous numbers. Then... There's the other one, the molecular formula. Which is when you're writing it without being its empirical formula. So but these, actual. these are the same, the it, molecular formula is the same as its empirical formula, empirical formula. But for some, say, some hydrocarbons, yeah, it's butane. not. Butane jumps to my mind. Butane is C4H10. That's what the molecule, each butane molecule will consist of four carbons and ten hydrogens. That's not as empirical because it can be expressed even closer than that, even you smaller. Can. You can half both sides, in fact, and it becomes C2H5. And that will be its empirical formula. And that's its molecular. Yeah, it's about as simple as that. So the sorts of questions you'll get asked on this in the exam is it will give you a mass of something, a mass of something else, and say work out the empirical formula. So I have an example here, because really, right we don't now. have a calculator. Yeah, which is a bit of an issue, we'll go on that. Um, analysis showed that 0 0.6075 grams of mag... 75. Oh, sorry. Grams of magnesium combines with 3.995 grams of bromine to form a compound. And you've got to work out its empirical formula. So what you do first is you break it down into moles, which brings an equation we did in a previous chapter. It does. It brings up moles equals mass over MR. Now you have your mass and you know the MR of your magnesium and your bromine from your periodic table. You do. So we should do this separately. You do 0.6075, the mass of magnesium, mm -hmm. over the MR, which is 24.3, I believe. It is. <coughs> And you've got 3.995 divided by 79.1. Yeah, I think it's 79.9. Something. Something yeah. And this will put it into moles, and this answer happens to be 0 0.025 and then 0 0.05. And you this is a ratio, this is going is. to be the eventual ratio between the magnesium and bromine in an empirical formula. You can see quite easily with this one, it's going to be two bromines for one magnesium, but sometimes they're more complicated numbers. So there, you divide by the smallest number yeah, of the two. That gives you your ratio in a proper format. So in this case, which is the smallest out of these? It's those, that one, and you divide that by it as well, so that becomes one. Two five is just one. And 0 0.05 divided by that is two. So that is your ratio. Remembering this side is magnesium, this side is bromine. And that means our um, empirical formula will be MgBr2. Later on, when we go through the periodic table and what things mean, you'll be able to work out that this particular example is MgBr2. But this is useful for other ones that follow very strange rules and you won't know. Absolutely. Exactly off the top of your head. So that's what this is for. And this is empirical, because that's the simplest ratio. That's what you're doing here. Mm -hmm. uh, molecular, I happen to have another example. So if you want to rub this off. No, I'll get off it. Now I'm going, all of these examples can be found in this book, so if you do happen to have this book, then they're all in there, you can have a look at what we're doing. If not, I, th I think we're going through it on the board anyway, so. Ah, so molecular. 
A compound has the empirical formula CH2. All right, now they ask these questions, they give you the other formula. The relative molecular mass of the actual compound is 56. So what is its molecular formula? Okay, that's why I said a bit differently. The two MRs of these separate elements are known. Yes, you can work this one out with what we did in a previous chapter. You know that carbon is 12, hydrogen is 1, and you've got 2 of it. So you can plus 2 times 1, which is just 2. And that equals 14. That's the MR in its empirical. And you want it to get up to 56. Now, it will remain in this ratio. It will just get higher. So I do that is just divide 56 by 14. Which happens to be... Um, 4. Yes, half what it is in the seven times table. So it becomes C4H8, because then times up your two values. And that's how you do molecular. They'll give you a simple, and you've got to work it out from there. You'll know the MR of this and the MR of that, so how many times bigger is it? This one happens to be butene, uh, just in case you're wondering. Yeah. And these are the sorts of questions they'll ask, and I think that's it for this video. I think it is. So we'll um, see you in the next one, but are you plotting something? Oh, no. No, water's always produced.